7.30. Now, shall we, let's start as, let's do the minutes and uh, whatever, and then we'll recess mm -hmm. and reconvene as the Local county board, board of health. Okay. Local board. Make a motion to approve the minutes January 20th. Second. Then move and second, we approve the minutes of January 20th. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All, all opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We don't have any tax abatements here. Mm -hmm. We're good. Two, I think. Make a motion to uh, accept the tax rule corrections. Second. It's been moved and second to accept the tax rule corrections. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. Let's take care of that. Okay, now we'll recess and we'll reconvene at the local board of health the quarterly meeting. <laughs> Officially. Officially. Now, now. Slightly down from last year. Yeah. Their revenue. But greater than what it was three years ago or four years ago. training, so personal protective equipment training coming up 
next month to fulfill the award grant. Um, and then in March will be the ESFA um, thing and century two and have everybody set up and shows what's available for the county if there was ever an emergency. Um, also coming up we have WIC training and then our recipe and career counselor will be going to several trainings. stuff it's going to take a year or two to really get familiar with everything and feel comfortable with it so and you do have help right can help you in some of these areas or as far as well getting to know what what's available and yeah all that so we meet uh, monthly with the coalition with the preparedness coalition and there's Five or six of us, and so they, they've been working on this for a long time, so I'm hoping they give help back filming to what they've done in the past. So there, there's a piece that we reach out to. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> as far as the transition from new to old, how's that going? Norse, would help? Something we need to get involved with? Or something you want to tell us about? Or? <laughs> it was, it's been a really rocky this last couple mm -hmm. weeks, and there was a lot of pieces that weren't, I should have been, had some idea about, and having no idea about really frustrates me, so it hasn't been as smooth as I hoped it would have been, mm -hmm. especially since I've been full time since June. There's a lot of pieces I thought I should have seen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this information that wasn't shared. I don't think it's been very frustrating. As far as like communication to hurt or help, is that? You know, I haven't really reached out. Okay. I think I probably could, and I haven't felt comfortable mm -hmm. doing that. Well, I mean, I think that line of communication needs to be pretty open, I would think, with course. I mean, just, uh, I mean, that's a big job, <laughs> you know, as you're seeing. Yeah. And it's hard to, uh, I would imagine it would be extremely difficult to learn it all, you know, first-handedly.
we do it line by line? Sure, give me cap on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sure is lengthy, isn't it? Yeah, we're not saying that. <laughs> <clears throat> That's why I figured to the end last page. I was thinking it was large print. Well, in mind, that was the same thing. This is for no, it's all program. I know, but your signature is yeah. like. So the, one, the one that I made, you'll see, look at that. Yeah, look at that That's what I read here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's good good. 2016 annual plan. Can we just do it all at once? Wait a minute. Hold up. Okay, we've got the annual report. That's this. Yeah, you right. right. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the annual report. 2015 annual report. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank Very you. good. Alright. That is the 2016 management plan. Have a plan. Yeah, it's normally not due till or June first, but I'm gonna say it early. That is one thing they want to change with our the weed law changes if that happens. It will all be due together. An update on that: they okay, are an interim committee on that. Uh, we had a couple guys testify yesterday in the front of the house committee. With the, the not just weed law change, I haven't heard from them how that one because they we tried it on the Senate side last year and didn't have too much other stuff going on, so they're trying to get it done early. So they're trying to slip it through early <laughs> yeah. just through the house side. So. Yeah. On this too, right? <clears throat> I move we accept the 2016 noxious weed management plan. Second that. It's been moved and second we adopt the 2016 noxious weed program management, management plan. plan. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> Spraying, but I got a township I, that wanted some uh, atrazine treatment on on cheap, so I'm gonna start that probably this afternoon. I think it's supposed to be nice this afternoon, tomorrow, and Friday, so it is. It's the last sheet. It, this one's the last sheet. I got big spaces too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, really big. Any more on the board on the building? Well, I talked to a guy from Kansas a couple weeks ago, and 
before their their board meeting, he said, but he thinks what they're going to do is just open up for bids. Um, I'm supposed to get back with him. He said end of this month or earlier next month. Early next month, probably. Not. So I will be back then. If he that's what they want to do, I'll be back to talk to him about what something like that would be worth. Permission to do the section 125, which is the cost to get which is to be able to be a house or at the office. Um, it just makes it legal to do the pre tax on the benefits. Um, then we also do the group term uh, application. So if you're in the event that you have three or more folks that are going to cover the side of this, that lets us establish the policy for you and get that to see what cost to you And then um, we just need an employee roster, which is first name, last name, and their hire name. Nothing personal that just allows us to see who's eligible um, to take on the additional benefits. What happens is, is when we sit down and meet with each person, we'll issue the no cost benefits on your behalf and behalf of the county. So we're always going to get that $3,000 of accidental death for them, 3000 for their spouse, and then 1000 for the children. We'll also issue a discount card at that time, and that's vision and hearing, chiropractic, uh, prescription drugs. Some of those discounts are actually pretty good, some of them are marketable. So I always tell people at least make a phone call on because you're having money nice and put your 60 bucks on the So everybody's going to get those no matter what. And while we're meeting with each person, we'll determine, they'll let us know if they have needs for that life insurance that locks in, pays it at 65 less than 100. That's a real popular life insurance option because nobody else does it. And we'll see if anybody has any other needs with cancer or more accident policies. At the end of the enrollment, um, we'll have all that information collected. Everybody that wanted some coverages and some benefits taken out will then work with you um, just to get some of it's a payroll deduction. You only have to enter that in one time and everything to age, age sensitive. Um, and that's it. We'll put that book together. We'll send you an Excel sheet with you know, everybody's coverages and things that they want to take out with us. And that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of moving parts. It's not a complicated process at all. It's just a matter of you know, sitting down. What's the logistics of meeting with folks? Do you meet with, give them the opportunity to meet with them privately? Yep, yep. So what we'll do is we can, if you have multiple of, like, how many employees do you have here? 51 full-time. Okay. And are they all scattered throughout different different parts of the city with different departments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then what we do to make it easy for them is we'll actually, um, you and I will work together on just a, a schedule of when we'll be at that particular location and just migrate to them. And that way they don't have to try to you know, travel to other places. So we'll just set that up and let them know that we're there. We'll send you an email notification if you want to email those so let them know here's kind of what's happening and kind of details the benefits that they're getting at their cost. And they'll have an option to look at some additional coverages. So most people will come and sit down at least to get the no-cost benefits because they know they're being issued on their behalf you know, for now. Um, and then they'll take a look at some other things that have need for that. But it's not too difficult. Um, I would say with 51, 51 people and kind of migrating around with a couple of weeks, you know, we can probably get that done in a couple of days. We may have a third day for follow-ups where people are going to talk to their spouse and things like that. So we want to make, it, make ourselves available as much as possible. So we're pretty low-key. You can just put us in a corner somewhere. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and, a, and a table, <laughs> and we're we're pretty good to go from that from that point of view. So, um, you mind if I um, just get the information I need to send up to our home office for me, and we can we can just carry on with the meeting. Okay. This is over. Okay. I'll, um, okay. As far as this goes, um, what will happen is once we submit the paperwork, um, our home office will do like a minute and a half verification call. Do you want that to be you or? Okay. So I'll go. Um, I'll go get this basic information from her. Will she know like payroll, how everything's paid, and then I'll have you come in and sign this, and then um, I'll have her start working on the employee rosters. Like we can get both of it. And, and you send the information ahead of time to the employees so yep. they have some idea what's yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do you how do you communicate to them typically for any type of other announcement that you're making? We email. send it through payroll usually. Okay. Not everybody has an email. Okay, so you guys at the shop. Yeah. Okay, so it just goes into their uh, are they direct deposit or is it most of but they get a slip. They get a slip. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we could do that. We could put something right in. Whatever your communication mechanism mm -hmm. is in place currently, we don't want to disrupt that because that's what they're used to. So we'll, we'll do something like that for you. Um, can we look at a calendar real quick and just see um, when the best day to start that would be? And I can verify that with her as well. Um, what about the third? What about the third week of? The 15th to the 19th, sometime in, in that week in February. Um, that should work. Okay. Except Wednesday morning. Not Wednesday mornings. Not Wednesday mornings. No, okay. because when you're here, I'll put you in this room. Okay. okay. So try to stay away from these days. And with the shop Thank guys, you. it's going to depend on if there's a snowstorm, if there's. Gotcha. Because you have to be down there to meet them at 7.30 in the morning. Okay. Let's That's what that. he usually does, because they're all gathered to get their instructions for the day. Okay. Um, so you want to try to kick it off on a Monday or a Tuesday? Which one of those two? I would prefer Monday. Okay. Well, let's set it up um, from Monday to 15th. And what we'll do um, is we can either have the enrollment period from the 15th from February 1st to February 29th, or we can set it from February 15th to March 31st. The advantage of um, a little bit longer enrollment period means that if anybody does take out coverage, their first deduction will happen until April, so it gives them about a month to where they won't have a, a deduction coming out if you prefer to do it that way. Or we can just close it off and let it the month and the deduction can start in March. I don't know if you're ever going to give them as much time as you feel. So Let's do, uh, we'll set it up on the 15th, um, to and we'll just come in on the 15th of Monday, catch you again, we'll avoid um, Wednesday, and then maybe do some follow-up on Thursday, Friday, if necessary, but that'll kind of be, you can do it Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. Wednesday afternoon, you okay? Yeah. You can do it Monday, Tuesday, and maybe finish it up Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Well, we should be able to get it all finished up Wednesday afternoon. We can maybe spend some time on Thursday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should be able to get it all finished up in that week, and then it's pressing this day as Monday. Monday, the 15th. 15th, okay. Okay. Right. My community calendar said 15th. Really? Yeah, we're close 15th. Get that. Unless you want to come to 16th. Okay, let's do that. Do the 16th then. Do you have a real calendar? Oh, it should. Wait a minute. President's Day, 15. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so Valentine's the 14th. Don't forget Valentine's Day. Yeah, don't forget my Valentine's And Morrison's birthday is 22nd. Well, we are off President's Day. Okay. We, we could change that. It's up to you guys. <laughs> Fine with me. <laughs> Uh, and just um, are, are, are people paid uh, weekly by weekly? Okay, they're paid monthly. Okay. That's what I wanted to know for her. And then um, do, you, do you think she'll know when the county will be established? What year? Monthly? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check with her and see if she knows when it's going to be established. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check with her and see if she knows when it's going to be established. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check with her and see if she knows when it's going to be established. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check with her and see if she knows when it's going to be established. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll check with her and see if she knows when it's going to be established. Y
Well, here's what I'll do. I'll go get this information from her as much as I can. Well, they're going to recess, and I can help you tell. There's oh, no point there. We'll recess. We'll reset. Well, I think I'm underdressed after a commission meeting here. You're all right. You dress like this every meeting? Or? You have to. Yeah. We'd like to change the dress code eventually. Uh, during the yeah, summer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thanks for working me in here. Yep. Um, a little bit about myself. I work for Cape Camp part time. Home office down at Hutch there. Of course, our corporate office is in Topeka there. So I hope you don't hold that against me after I read about the Dillons here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a tough deal. That's yeah. tough. Um, and then, you know, I think Jerry Blair and Ellsworth is another K County. I mean, they're losing. I was surprised that Walmart. Uh, Walmart was going out. Five months after they built it. Yeah. Yeah. So you close it down. Yeah. That can't be very cost effective. Yeah. And Dillon's is not receptive to any alternative or nothing. And mine's an made up on it. Well, except maybe, maybe. except maybe they're negotiating with them on leaving some of the stuff, old stuff in the store like food and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You, know, like you know, whenever I uh, go west down out with 54, sometimes I stop in at Greensboro. There, that, that, and that seems like a good concept, but that's the only store like that uh -huh. in the state, or sort of like a mini mart mm -hmm. with a gas station. There. I thought well, that should take hold. They were going to close that one down too, but I think the tornado changed. But yeah, a little sympathy there. Man. Yeah, um, but you know, uh, years ago, I've been doing this eight years, so when I first started, I noticed. Uh, Dollar General was really coming into the communities. We got one. And, and you have one. And you know, they just built one in Kinsley. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not a stock professor or anything when I give, but I'm on a couple hundred shares. <laughs> you know, I, I like that business model. That's where I go, on yeah. it, you know, because it just, it's convenient and it's sort of in my price range. You know. But anyway, I'm home office out of Hutch. I've lived there most of my life. I've retired law enforcement. I was there on Dutch PD for 28 years. 27, I guess, I came on when I was 20. Retired when I was 47. I was Reno County Commissioner for 12 years. 12 long years. Who <laughs> 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 took, 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 took your spot? Who was that for you? Uh, one of the president guys? Well, you, you probably would like this guy. His last name's Dylan. <laughs> he's, a, he's a nice guy. You know, uh, we, we don't live too far apart. I live off the northeast part of Hutch, halfway between Cuba and Hutch, if you're familiar with that area yeah. at all. But anyway, welcome to K-Camp. This is my first visit. I came in earlier, um, uh, what was it, last summer, I guess? Late, late last summer. And uh, this is a little bit with the clerk to sort of get a feel. So I sort of have a feel for how commissioners commissioners operate. And, uh, but if I have a downfall, I'm probably uh, have too much of a sense of humor. <laughs> there, you know, it's better to laugh than to cry. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for working me, and I appreciate it. Uh, I usually come around about once a year. Uh, tomorrow, I'm headed up to. Sherman County in Goodland. That's in the other time zone. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll leave there. I'll leave tomorrow afternoon. I've got early morning meeting there, and I'll go to Cody Thomas County. And uh, you're going there tonight? Yeah. Are you? You're on business? Oh, I officially in college basketball. So. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. uh, you have you been doing that a long time? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. For a while. Um, I had bought a house there in Hutch off of a, a this year where Collins mm -hmm. West mm -hmm. he, he's, he, he passed away last name of Anderson Andy. Uh -huh. I don't know if you ever knew him or not. Uh, I guess he did 30 something years. Uh, well, I you know, worked at Krause Plow in Hutch, but he officiated. Is that what is that what you do mainly or? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're not up with uh with, uh, 
Yeah. So I'm not going to see you at the Super Bowl. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, team at the Chico tournament. Yeah, yeah. national yeah. tournament. This is, uh, do, you do, do you go there uh, every year? For no, this is my first year there. Oh, first year. Okay. First we'll year we'll see how he does. Yeah. That's about I'm going to be on the first year of the year. We're going to go heckling. I'm going to be on the first year of the year. Yeah. Yeah, throw popcorn at the ref. I'll bring my whistle for breakfast. See if you can get thrown out. Well, it's sort of fun. You know, I. Of course, you know, PD works the, works the security there, uh -huh. and uh, I did that for a lot of years there. Uh, have a lot of good memories. Yeah. Time to move on. Yeah. Uh, um, I just got a little handout here, just sort of give you some general information here about K Camp. Um, and so just bear with me here. Uh, since uh, we just we just replaced our CEO, and you know David. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet Tom? You know, the other CEO. Um, I mean, David's the CEO. Whenever I say just replaced, uh, he's uh, David's officially been on for a full year. Right. So just before he, uh, just right after he came on, uh, we had a transition for a year uh, to also, and uh, and so David's from from California. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I don't hold that against him. There. He, is from, he is from the Midwest. Uh, he wanted to move back here. He's in his 40s. Um, and this, of course, I'm not in my 40s. Uh, but uh, he, uh, we have a communication gap. And, 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 you know, between the people in their 60s and the one in their early 40s, you know. Um, and uh, especially if you're from California. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I, I went to see him. He said, I want to try something new this year. I already said, uh, since my first year, I want to, I want to construct a PowerPoint for you. I thought, oh, Lord, PowerPoint. <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, you know, PowerPoint was a projector, oh, right. and you have the screen, and you're, and you're writing on it. And I thought, oh, boy, I want to have to get a truck or something. Like that <laughs> stuff in and set this up. So I'll go. He says, I got all the stuff ready. Why don't you come up to the peak the next time you're up in the area? And I did. So we went in there and he set down this big stack of stuff. Here I've got Sherman County and you know the, the others. And he says, well, well, here's the power plant. And so I'm looking at this and looking around for the rest of the equipment. And I said, that this is this is this is a PowerPoint? And he says, Yeah. And he says, Well, you know, I was a little worried. When I was in high school we called them handouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I was relieved. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, these are double sided. K Camp is in its 25th year. In 1992, when K Camp was formed uh, by a, a uh, group of 32 county commissioners, came together at KEC. KEC facilitated the meeting. And what happened back in 92, counties across Kansas, uh, there, there were a number of them. And Insurance was evolving. It was, it was definitely into what we call a soft market. Insurance term is for when it's competitive and prices are going down. And so a lot of insurance companies were dropping counties, companies. Uh, of course, this is an insurance pool. And uh, there were a number of counties, I think it was like 16 of them, had to actually call Topeka, the Kansas Insurance Department, so we, we can't get insurance. No one will even give us a quote. Well, what are we going to do? Insure our vehicles, and property, and buildings. And so then, then they assign various insurance companies to those counties. Because in Kansas, you have to have coverage, and there has to be a, you know, a mechanism to insure that. Just ask any drunk driver that's, you know, that has insurance, you know. Uh, he has to go through the Kansas Insurance Department and get assigned, what they call assigned risk. And these were good counties, but yet they were paying very high premiums. The, the good thing is they had insurance. The bad thing is there isn't no quote, no negotiation. They just come out and look it over and here's the bill, you know, and you pay it. And so these 32 Kansas counties came together and formed an insurance pool. KCAMP is property casualty liability. K work is our sister agency, separate 
it was formed at the same time for workers' compensation only. And so now, you know, we're into our 25th year, uh, and we continue to grow. Uh, and at least last year, see, when did Stafford County come on last year? Last year. <coughs> January? Mm -hmm. Okay. Last year, we had, a, you know, Stafford County, Hodgman County, Cheyenne County, if you know where that's at. That's North of Goodman, yeah. Um, and Rice County. Uh, just this year, we added Kearney County and Jackson County, just north of the peak of there. there. Well, you're probably familiar with at least all the Juco counties. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do, do you officiate? Uh, Four-year colleges, two or uh, subdivision two stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, an insurance pool is not an insurance company. I want to emphasize that we don't want to portray ourselves as an insurance company. We're sort of like a credit union. You ask any banker about a credit union, and they say, "Well, they're a great organization, but they're not a bank. But they look like a bank." They act like the bank, and they talk bank <laughs> lingo, you know. And so that's sort of like like us for member owned. Uh, one other comment about this, Commissioner, is broad coverage, prudent limits. Whenever I say broad coverage, it would be K Camp is an insurance pool that was formed by the members. And if you can imagine, I, it, let's take your health insurance here. Are you are you uh, partially self funded? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it? Was it uh, who was on the team to figure out what kind of insurance are we going to have for the employees? Was it employee driven or or by consultant? It was by our agent, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of counties they form a employee committee and says what kind of insurance we're going to have. Well, man, it's the sky's the limit, you know. Same same sort of here, only it's a lot more affordable. The commissioners got together. Here's what we want. Here's what we need. So here's what we want. And so broad coverage. Here's the example I like to use. When I was working our border counties down on the Oklahoma border, we've had some earthquake activity down in that area. And Harper County, one of our member counties, called us. And they had cracks in the walls and cracks in the floors on the courthouse. I don't know if you've ever been to that courthouse, but it's it's over, you know, it's an old courthouse, like a lot of Kansas County courthouses. And so they called the clerk home and said, you know, I just, you know, we, we've had these cracks come up on the floors. We don't know if there's a direct correlation between the seismic activity down here, earthquakes, uh, or not. But what we're talking about is do we have earthquake coverage? And the simple answer is yes, you do. It's part and parcel of the policy. You have flood insurance coverage. It's part and parcel. Volcano terrorism, they're all part of the policy, standard policy. If you look at your homeowners, if you want flood insurance, you've got to buy extra insurance. You know, you'll see on your homeowners the exclusions. They exclude this and this and this and this. K Camp doesn't exclude really none of that. So that's what I mean by broad coverage. Strong net, yes, that position. I'll mention this here in just a minute. This next map, commissioners, is just the the, the map of Kansas here, the dark, are the uh, are the member counties, uh, and this is we haven't updated this map. I've got to go to the peak of next month. You know, when I work Kansas, I work Hutch and I-135 is a dividing line. It takes me six to seven months to work Western Kansas and six to seven months to work Eastern Kansas. So I'm just finishing up. You know, once I once I go to Morton County or Sherman and Thomas and, and Greeley County um, uh, tomorrow and, and Friday, then I'll do Elkhart and uh, Syracuse. I'll be pretty much done for this. Now I move. I got to go to Topeka. Uh, but like this here, like Jackson County hasn't been uh, penciled in, and uh, Wichita County. So, I mean, Kearney. 
Uh, so you know we're 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 growing. As a practical matter, we can't insure all the Kansas counties. You know, let's take the urban counties. We have six urban counties in Kansas. You know, they're the big counties, population wise. They're all self insured. They insure themselves and like KCAM, they buy reinsurance here uh, to cover the catastrophic claims. The next page over is just the KCAM governance. Uh, it is governed by a seven-member board of trustees. The trustees, the only qualification to be a trustee is you have to be a county elected official. Uh, so going forward in the future here, I, would, I anticipate we're going to have one or two vacancies. If anyone's ever interested in being engaged in this here, they meet once a month at the peak. It's a very active board. Uh, and, and they take the job seriously. I used to be a trustee also when I was at Reno County, so I'm sort of down on that side of the table also. Uh, the next page over are the board members. Uh, I guess from this area, uh, probably uh, Ed Harmon, Sheriff of Ellis County, is, is one of the commissioners. Uh, Adam Smith, I don't know if you Adam, no Adam from Wallace County. I don't consider in this area, we're still pretty good ways out there, uh, out there in Wallace County, Sharon Springs. And uh, Kathy Luthai, uh, Ottawa County Commissioner. We just had a, a trustee that retired that had been with us since 1992, and that was Kathy Bowman. Uh, most everybody knows her from, from next door here. Uh, she just retired last year. Next page over. Again, we need to update this page since I was given this here uh, last fall. Marilyn Owens, our administrative assistant, retired about two months ago, and she she had been with us since 1992. And we've just added a new uh, risk manager, and he's still, you know, formulating his you know, plan for risk management services here. So he'll be in touch probably with the clerk and some of the department heads here about what KCAMP has to offer in the way of reducing and mitigating your insurance claim. Um, next page, KCAMP net assets. Uh, this only goes from 2007 to 2014, but I'd like to back up to 1992. In 1992, at the end of the first year, the cash carryover for KCAM in their first year was like $7,000. Now that would be here like Stafford County at the end of the year having a $7,000 cash carry. You'd be a little nervous. I don't know if we're going to make this or not, make this work or not. But it, but it did. It's, it's, uh, it's grown every year since then. We've had a couple of down years, but it's like anything in the down years, you, if you have a strong net asset position, that keeps things going until you have your better years. Uh, really through the end of 2015, our net assets, and net assets for us essentially what money in the bank, bonds, investments, cash. Uh, you know, we, we own our own building and a couple of cars. Uh, but the net asset now is under just under $22 million. Uh, so that carries us forward and this allows us to do things that we normally wouldn't be able to do like any insurance companies, to keep our premiums low. And I'll explain this in just a minute. Um, property rate, you know, whenever we do your insurance here, we figure your property, insurance, your buildings, machinery, equipment, uh, vehicles. Uh, essentially, what we charge, we break it out into $100 increments. What's this courthouse? What's it cost to insure this courthouse? Well, what's our appraised value of it, insurance-wise? Remember, all of your insurance on your real property is replacement cost. This courthouse, the biggest threat, of course, is fire. This course, the courthouse were to burn and it was total loss. Uh, what's it going to cost to replace it? This many square foot, essentially this kind of courthouse, and that's what, that's what your coverage is versus your actual cash value. If you vacate this courthouse and build a new courthouse, what's a courthouse for? It'd be like a school, you know. We say, well, it's not worth much, you know. But we understand on uh, your buildings, 
that you have to have that kind of coverage. On your vehicles, it's called actual cash value. If you crash a, a 2009 um, Ford pickup that was in the sheriff department, uh, at the time it was totaled out, what's it worth? 2009 Ford pickup. Uh, so it's broke out into $100 for insured values. Because of our strong net asset position, we've actually been able to reduce our, our what we're charging for insurance from $0.18 cents per $100 down to $0.14. Cents. Next page over, you'll see the liability rate is computed a little differently. It's based off of your payroll. There's a direct correlation between number of employees and what we call exposure to being, you know, having litigation brought against you. you know, the the uh, more employees you have in the sheriff department, the greater the chances are something's going to happen. You know, uh, and law enforcement liability is its own separate coverage. In other words, when we when we insure K Camp, deliver your policy, you're going to see various categories what we're charging premiums for. One of them is law enforcement liability. Law enforcement liability usually exceeds general liability, which is basically everything else. Uh, and it's our second most expensive part of the insurance equation here for insuring counties. And it's broke out of $100 of payroll. Again, it's went from $2.18 to $1.82 uh, per $100 of payroll. Uh, these liability claims are still our biggest concern as, as within any insurance company. You know, if you take if you take a sheriff deputy and he he goes out and he gets involved in a pursuit of a vehicle and he crashes his vehicle and it's totaled out. Nothing else happens. Uh, no injuries, nothing. You know, we, we close that claim in about a month. You know, how much does this vehicle work? Here's your check. Okay, you know, we'll buy you we'll buy you a car. Case is closed. But if someone is injured or a fatality, we settle the property side real quick. The liability side might run for four or five years before that is resolved. And so that's why we have these cases hanging out there. Um, as a trustee, you know, we, we deal with those a lot where we get reviews on that and you, you take suicide in a jail, you know. Um, it, there's usually some kind of litigation as a result of that. Either rightly or wrongly, there's usually just some kind of litigation. And those things go on for quite, quite some time. Um, next page over. Rate stabilization program. This is a program that, that once it's re, if it's renewed again, then Stafford County may very well qualify for this program that we offer to all of our members that's been with us for a while. And this is the third time that we have renewed this particular program. It's, it's proven to be very popular with our counties. And simply put, uh, what it consists of is that we as K Camp would agree to insure you as Stafford County for essentially the same price for the next three years. You'll not see that with an insurance company where you know, I'd love to get a hold of my my car insurance said, hey, if I if I agree to stay with you for the next three years, will my premium stay the same? You know, well, they look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> you know. Of course there is some provisions in this here. But even that being said, even insurance companies don't even want to deal with any you know, provisions, provided that your 2% loss ratio stays below 65%. If, if it's a four-year loss ratio, and I think that's sort of the key, you really need to do it. It's about four years so that we get a handle on what your loss ratios are each year. <clears throat> and it's 5% rate cap if it's above 65%. In other words, we will agree to raise your insurance no more than 2% if it's raised any at all. And the past stabilizations, really, there wasn't no... If it was like below 30%, there was no price increase. We've had some counties that's gone for quite a while that's had no premium increase or very little. 
in some cases even a little bit of a decrease. In, a, in addition to that, then we provide a credit back to that county, and the average was $8,600. That's recognized on your policy statement when we give that to you. So here another couple of years, and if this is renewed right now, you know, we just started January 2015, we got 16, 17, and the trustee will decide, are we going to redo it again? That's where then Stafford County might be in a position, depending on what your loss ratio is on. 47 of the counties qualified for this. Um, it's like anything, we're all in this together. We always have some counties that, that you know, have very high, high claims, and, you know, and it's not to say something could happen here in Stafford County someday if we've got your back. That happens. The liability program structure. K Campus partial is an insurance pool. We are partially self-funded. And this is where our strong net asset position really leads us to, to save a lot of money with this program structure. On the liability side. Say somebody comes into the courthouse, slips on the floor because it's wet, and they break the neck. I'm a mean old commissioner. I'm going to sue them all. You know? And this face a lot of us that go to the courthouse and we're sort of old. You know? <laughs> and that can happen. Um, and the reason I mention slip and fall is because that's our most common claim, liability-wise, within a courthouse, is a slip and fall. Um, we have reinsurance uh, that kicks in after the first $500,000 of that claim. In other words, we self-insure for $500,000. Then we have a $2.5 million policy. Then we have another layer on top of that policy. Uh, so we retain the first $500,000. Up until last year, it was $250,000. By going to 500000 we significantly reduced our reinsurance cost, which is a significant cost for us every year. The next page, the same applies for the pro, uh, property program structure. We, we reinsure, uh, or we insure for the first 250000 That's always been that way. Then we have reinsurance uh, of a $2 million and then and then another reinsurance on top of that. Uh, on the liability side, we never really got into a reinsurance, you know, that I can recall, maybe once or twice if that. Uh, on the property side, it's a little different. Uh, 250,000 is a lot of money, but, but you know, uh, what, what's a uh, dump truck pulling a new, uh, loader down the road that crashes and totals out, now we're at $250,000 for that total property claim there. Um, and so we do have reinsurance. Our largest property claim since I've been doing this occurred just the first year after I, I came on down in, in Barber County. Road and bridge went out and we are going to do some welding on a bridge. That's fine. Do your thing, fix that county bridge. It was windy that day. It's in the, I remember it was in the early spring, and it started a fire. It burned up 35,000 acres. <laughs> it took a few days. Ted Turner's got some property down there. You know, got into some of his elf ranch, you know. But all of a sudden, you got, you got, I don't mean, I don't know, it, it, hundreds, uh, it wasn't hundreds, but it was over 100 miles of fence. You know, people think, well, you know, barbed wire fence with T posts in it and it catches on fire still standing is just fine. It doesn't work like that. You know, it's, it's weakened, uh, it'll, it'll rust a lot faster, and sort of like your roof after a hailstorm, you get up there and look at it and say, I think I'll just keep playing. this roof is just fine. You know, but you better replace it. But anyway, all of a sudden, we got in the reinsurance, and in those particular cases, by like K-Camp, once we figured this out, Man, this is going to exceed our two hundred fifty thousand. It's easiest for us just to get a hold of the reinsurance and give them a check for two hundred fifty thousand, and they take it from there. And then whatever they got two fifty to go with, and then whatever is over, they cover. And that again, that was a property and also a liability because you know 
then you got sued because some ranchers, you know, I don't know if you've seen these across Kansas, you, you, I know you've seen them, where you got the old converted farmsteads, you know, the old house that's full of hay now, you know, and, now, and, it, and it had a couple of them burned down. All of a sudden, it wasn't a house full of hay. You know, that was a that was a very valuable paper structure. You know, <laughs> and, you know it's sort of like all of us. You know, man, this is you seize the opportunity. You know, so you have to get to do that. Um, and twenty fifteen coverage enhancements. Um, we're always every year we look at. You know, what are we lacking? What do we need to update? What do we need to add? Uh, and again, just to point to the, toward the bottom of the page, flood, $1 million to $5 million. Now, fortunately, across Kansas, I know that the K-Camp counties that we have, the 65-plus counties that we have, none of the courthouses are built next to a stream. You know. But we have a lot of other buildings that are in a flood area. And so... The courthouses we don't worry about, but, uh, you know, the other buildings we do. And when you talk about water damage, this wasn't necessarily a flood. This was in Hamilton County at Syracuse here uh, three years ago. Uh, the courthouse there, water damage, <coughs> you don't think about that so much. And that particular courthouse there up on the top floor was a jury room with a bathroom in it. Had a leak in the bathroom, in his bathroom. Maintenance guy goes up there, all oh, this week. Puts in the new flapper and everything. Tightens it too tight. He does this on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. His springs a leak that night. Mm -hmm. Courthouse was also closed on Monday. I can't remember what it was on all of that. Commissioners meet in the basement. <coughs> so when they come in Tuesday morning, it was knee deep. This is the three story courthouse. You have the jury room, below that are the basically the county offices, and in the basement, uh, a lot of commissioners meet in the basements for some reason, I don't know what, but they're in basements, <laughs> but anyway, in the basements of commissioners and maintenance and stuff like that. But below the jury room was a register of deeds office. All of those books were destroyed. I don't know if you, what kind of books you got here, but they're usually pretty good size. We got into our reinsurance pretty quick there mm -hmm. on that. Just on the restoration cost of of those of those books. So whenever I went over to see the commissioners, they just finished up. Man, it's felt like new paint, new carpet, new sheet rock on the wall. <laughs> like, well, they shook my hand. That is a wonderful <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. I won't tell you what it cost you, but that's okay. <laughs> so anyway, but in that case, the only thing is said. They said, uh, any advice to us on this? I said, well, about that maintenance man, what did he use to tighten that down? <laughs> you know, these little plastic things, it's usually hand tied. Don't take vice grips to them. And <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it was several hundred thousand water damage. What you have interned for, though? Uh, fine arts, when I was in, just mentioned this here, and commissioner said, well, we used to have $15,000 on fine arts, and that's a million. Now, where's fine arts at in the loop of things with county operations? Well, we do have some, we do have some historical society, you know, buildings that we, that we insure. But a lot of counties have artifacts. Ness County, when I was in there, I was looking there, and on the wall they have the display cases with old stuff. Old buffalo guns. I don't know what those things are worth. And so I mentioned to them, I said, well, like out uh, here, if this courthouse catches on fire, you know, what are those three old uh, smokestacks worth out there? You know. They said, well, no, they loaned them to us. And I said, well, here to you, if they're on a loan, that person there is going to say they're worth a lot of money. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you're covered. When I was in Pottawatomie County, Westmoreland, in the commissioner's office, they had a big stand. Had a big, uh, is it a cello? A string instrument, you know, the big one. It was there. And that, uh, you know, really nice looking. Looked expensive to me. So I mentioned to the chairman, I said, well, for instance, that string instrument there in the corner. And uh, I said, 
and anybody know where, anything about that? And of course they said, it's been here so long, we don't know where it came from, what it is. And I said, well, that would be covered. And I said, so what's it worth? Of course, the chairman looked at that and he said, well, I guess it would be a million dollars. I said, you know, maybe we better come down here and do an appraisal. <laughs> Animals, 5,000. Do you have a canine unit here? We did, Again, we insure canine units. Uh, and when we first started in 92, there was uh, mainly most of the counties along our I-70 corridor have, have canine units. Um, and one of them got hit by a car and killed. So we had a loss for that. And we only had to insure 5,000. Back in 92, this is a couple of years ago. Well, they're about $25,000 now. We covered it, but you know, we sort of fell behind on that there. Just sort of an oversight, but we, you know, we, if there was ever any doubt on a claim, there is a doubt. We try to, as much as possible, resolve it in the favor of the county. Um, and Risk management services, I just want to talk about just two things. I'll be wrapping this up. One of them is attorney assist. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with attorney assist? So you, have you talked about it? Okay. Not yet, but I know. Yeah. Well, the commissioner's aware of that program, mm -hmm. how we use it there when we have a contract. You know, even though David Lukes is an attorney, we have an in-house counsel. We still have that toll-free number for if you have any questions that might be germane to an insurance issue. Whether it's a claim or where we insure, give us a call. It's you know you're paying for it. I mean, we're not sending you a bill every month, but, but you know, uh, as you know, attorneys are very fond of breaking breaking their fees down into the minutes. You know, about ten minutes. You know, okay, how much is this worth? Well, well, it took me two minutes to write a ten minutes, so it's twelve minutes. <laughs> uh, risk avoidance grant. Are you familiar with that? The risk avoidance grant, again, it's your money. We have $2,000 set aside for Stafford County. It's your money. And this is to be used for risk mitigation or to manage any losses uh, that you may or could occur. Usually the budget, the, the departments that use this are usually your big budgets, sheriff, and public works. Uh, and on the risk avoidance, have you been on our website much to, to see that? You'll see that you'll see the tie-in to the risk avoidance grant. And simply put, if you can use that money any way you want to, as long as it helps mitigate or reduce risk. For example, uh, a lot of our Kansas uh, sheriff's departments have uh, patrol cars. It seems like every deputy has their own car. I don't know if that's how it is here in Stafford. But a lot of them were lacking in the additional bumper protection because of deer hits. So if they want to, if the sheriff wants to say, hey, I'll put on better bumpers, and that way if you do hit a deer, the damage won't be as great, hence risk mitigation. On the public work side, how many gravel trucks or dump trucks do you have? Do you, uh, do you have a unit road system here? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have townships. Yeah. yeah. On your dump trucks, though, one of our most numerous claim, property claim, comes out of public works for pitted windshields. Because in Kansas, of course, you're required to cover your loads, tarp the loads. A lot of Kansas counties, they might have bought, bought a dump truck and the tarp wore out, but they didn't have the money to get a new tarp. You can use this money to update your tarps. The the claims aren't that great. In, it's great to me. I mean, eight hundred dollar windshield is a lot of money. You know, insurance wise, it's not. But a bunch of them, you know, a nickel here, a nickel there. For you, for for after a while, you're going to talk about real dollars. Uh, so you can use it for that, and you can use it for additional training if you ever want to have any any training here and said, hey, we need, we're going to have a half-day retreat, have somebody come in and talk to us about county liability issues to our department heads and key staff, and you can do that. And we, and we also provide that service in addition. We'll do it in-house, too. Uh, 
with our risk manager, if he'll be happy to come down and do that now. Um, so, you know, don't let that don't let that pass you by, that risk of risk, because it's one of those things, use it or lose it. We're not saying just use it to be using it, but you can find, <coughs> I mentioned about the courthouse. Uh, I don't know what your policy is whenever they come out, like in the snow, if you got somebody there that keeps the water mopped up off the floors, you know, and keeps on top of it. But if you want to buy a high-speed fan to help on that or buy some cones or something, use it for that. You know, how much was that? Two thousand. Two thousand. Does that carry over year to year, or is it is it just a little one? It you have to use it by December fifteenth. Okay. Uh, so, so far change. we've had it. But it's up to the trustees, and they've renewed it every year for the past six years. Does that change based on? Is that number going to stay constant? Either? It's been constant okay. since we okay. since we've implemented it. So it's just, <coughs> um, I didn't know if it's something that carried over year to year. Yeah. It's 4,000 next year. Yeah. 6,000. No, no. In other words, yeah. it's 2,000 a year. And if you don't use it, you don't get to carry that true. over. Okay. You, okay. Okay. you know, in Howard, uh, uh, Kansas and Elk County, when I was there, they had a um, they, they had the um, road bridge in there. And they said, we, here's the question we have. We need to keep, we need to start updating our road signs. You know, uh, you know, stop signs, yield signs, speed limit signs, traffic control signs, they have a certain reflectivity on them. After a while, they wear down. So they want to know, can we buy a sign-making machine and make our own signs with this? You know, sign-making machines are going to cost more than 2000 but we can we use that to apply for it? Yes, you can. Buy your own blanks. So, you know, is your road bridge how many bridges do you, county bridges do you have? Too many. Too many. Yeah. Uh, do you like Saline and Reno County, just start shutting them down, you won't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, your weight limit signs, you know, as Wooden Bridge goes around and says, I've got to replace a bunch of signs, you can use this money for that. There, like your curve signs. But a, lot, a number of counties have bought, actually bought a sign making machine, and they just yeah. over over the. We got one. You, okay, you have one. Does it work for you? I guess he's it's, had it for quite a while. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. So your signs are in pretty good shape here, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, he makes signs for the townships. He, we just did a township. Uh, okay. Norm, Norm Bowers was here. Oh, yeah. Norm. Okay, you see. Road graders, how many road graders do you have? Three, four, three, three or four. Are they? Do you keep them up to date, or four, no. do you do at least purchase them? <laughs> <or>? Three. <laughs> yeah. But you can use them for for public works if you if they want to buy some new barricades, uh, cones. Uh, you can use it for that. Literally anything that you see that hey, this could maybe head off a liability claim. So we're pretty liberal. Yeah, I didn't say. You, huh? New sidewalk. New sidewalk. Cracks in the sidewalk that people might trip over. We've, we've got to replace sidewalks this year. Uh, here at the courthouse? Yeah. Check, check. We had one county that did. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Replace some where they fallen down. And, and see, because, you know, does the city have an ordinance on sidewalk ordinance? That if they go down so far, I don't know. you could try. Well, it's hard to say the city, especially if the if the city has an ordinance in like a hutch where, you know, that's why I don't live in a city. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, is you know, uh, if your sidewalk settles and there's potential at like inch and a half, two inches, and they give you a notice to replace it, of course they're expensive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a lot of elderly people can't do that. And so he'll come in and do it, and he just put it on your tax bill. It's, huh. it's just not going to go very far towards the sidewalk. No, that But you know, coming up your steps, replacing Car you know, uh, handrails, treading down the end, end, yeah, the treads, you can yeah. use it for that. You, did, you know, you, you use your imagination, somehow you can try to tie it in. To, we don't, you know, that's a potential claim, you know, a lawsuit. Hanging out. Well, the sidewalks are right in front yeah. of this door out here. Right, actually. especially, especially if, if a person that uses a cane comes in and complains yeah. about it, <clears throat> and then that same person later on actually trips. Mm -hmm. 
than, than, a, than it can get. Can there brighter lights at the steps leading in before that? Well, it's just that crater in the cement that's working its way out. And we, we've had some counties use it. A number of counties have been using it for security enhancements, but not the remote video systems like Road and Bridge. Uh, Morton County down the Elkhart did one where they have a park across the street from the courthouse and somebody took a four wheel rod and ran through the gazebo. And we covered it and they, they put up cameras over there. It's monitored by this So, last thing, Commissioners, uh, this updated model employee handbook, just wanted to mention that. That is where we have. We, we keep the employee handbooks updated, generally speaking, for counties. If you ever, and we urge the counties, you know, every two or three or four years, look at your employee handbook, see what's changed out there technology wise that you need to address. And we're not trying to tell you what to do here, just giving you ideas. Go off of. And the last thing is, is e risk hub. Again, I did not want to show my ignorance to uh, our CEO, so I didn't ask what it was. I didn't have no idea what it was. I figured, well, I'll find out from somebody. So I went to a couple of commission meetings and said, you got E-Risk Cub? And finally, the commissioner said, well, what's E-Risk Cub? And I said, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody here know what that is? It's supposed to be a dash between the E and the O. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Computer problem. Uh, we were one of the first insurance organizations to actually insure for cyber crime, liability. This was back in 1999. We started that coverage. A lot of the insurance companies hadn't even got in on it, you know. But if you've been reading what happened at Target, where well, you know people's identities yeah. are stolen, and they're going to come after somebody, but whoever did that. And so, if you look at this courthouse, you are privy to a lot of identities and their information. You've got their name, their address, their date of birth, social security number, bank in some instances, bank information, credit cards. And so if you're ever hacked into it and some identities are stolen, give us a call. <laughs> there, it's like anything, there's some limited coverage, it really depends on the county that what steps have you taken here. And I don't know who builds your firewalls for you. We have a, a, a IT. IT that comes once a week. Yeah, okay, so, you know, because we had some counties that have no idea, they got computers, and I said, what's about firewall, how do you update them? Well, I don't know. Everybody looked at us, well, you better, you need to stay on top of that, because you, you're really hanging out there. Proactive on that. Yeah, because you have to be so careful, especially uh, the clerk's office, uh, I mean, the court clerk's office, they have an awful lot of information, and the sheriff department does too. We've only had one claim since we instituted this, I won't name the county, but uh, they got hacked, the treasurer's office got hacked into it. They actually made off with some county funds uh, somewhere out of the country. And we covered it. It wasn't a lot, fortunately, before I think it got interceded, but they made off with a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So you never think about that till hey, has anybody ever had their identity stolen here? Yeah. You have? My wife did. Was it? I've never talked to anybody that's had it. Was that pretty messy? Luckily, it? by local bank. <coughs> caught it. Local bank? Uh huh, because they were wanting to close one account. So <laughs> money and, and they said, Well, what's your address? And the lady knew that it wasn't me on the phone. You know. She was just trying to find out more information about that guy, you know, who it was. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was scary. Yeah. It's so when you're uh, lucky to have a local bank where people know you. Yeah, did you get an entity theft protection after that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have it. Uh, it's worth ten dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, that million dollar million dollar policy. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll cover you. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Any thank questions? You. Nice meeting you. Same here. Yeah. You well, answered. You answered my one question. What was that? That he risked. He risked. See, it's worth the trip. Did you know what it was? <laughs> Did you know what it was? Yeah, I thought I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Can you guys go to, uh, go to KCCA or, uh, yeah. or KEC? I mm -hmm. well, look forward to you. Know, we, we host the evening reception yeah. there at KCC. I'm not sure where it's at this year. I haven't heard. It'll be uh, in April or March or April. Mm -hmm. May. 
Last year it was in Manhattan. No, it was in Wichita. I think it's in Manhattan. I think it's in Manhattan. Uh, year four was in Manhattan. Last year it was in Wichita. And one time it was in Junction City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they spread it around. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Right, I appreciate it. You. I appreciate you taking time to listen to me. Play. Yeah. I'll see you about a year, maybe. Oh, okay. Have right, a safe thanks. trip to good, then. Thank you. Anything? Nope. We done? Yep. Uh, almost. Almost. One more. One more. Two more. Two more. Two more. Two more. Can I start looking to talk about people? Sure. I mean, we left you some previous too. Okay. I use my key camp bag every morning. That big bag that carries mm -hmm. 20 board down and all that stuff. It's pretty nice. Which is say key camp bag. Right? <laughs> 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 uh, we are finished. We'll adjourn. <laughs>